Hi guys, this is Megan with the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I'm doing a what I eat in a day. I'm on kind of a, a nourishing, tradi nourishing traditions diet. It's kind of um, almost like a full GAPS diet right now. Me and my husband are doing um, about three or four workouts a week so I'm trying to be on a, a pretty high protein low carb diet right now to help build muscle and burn fat. So. That is what I'm currently on, so I wanted to show you guys what I eat in a day. It's a highly requested video. I've had so many people asking me to do a what you eat in a day or what you eat in a week. So I'm doing this one first. I decided to just pick today and show you guys what I eat. And then I think starting tomorrow, I'm gonna show you guys what we eat for dinners over an entire week. So I have those two highly requested videos coming very soon, and I'm really excited to show you. So let's get right into this video. So typically in the mornings, I will make the kids breakfast, I'll scramble them eggs or something like that. This Today's video is about what I eat in a day, and normally I am not hungry for breakfast. So even though I make the kids a breakfast, it's not that I couldn't make myself something, I just really am not very hungry. I don't feel like having any warm food in the morning, It's I, I don't know why, but I like to try to get something in before I have my coffee. So I'll get up and I'll take my thyroid pill, and then I will usually take one of our farm fresh eggs from our chickens in the backyard and I'll separate the egg white and the egg yolk. I'll give the egg white to the dog and I'll just swallow the egg yolk. Um, egg yolks are amazing for you. They have so many healthy fats and um, it has choline and so many important things for you. And if you eat it raw, it's less damaged by heating. So you actually get more of the nutrients that way. So I like to try to eat a raw egg yolk every day and then I will finish it down with a glass of raw milk, and then that's usually all I have for breakfast, and I'll make my coffee, and then I'm normally not hungry until lunch. I don't know why, I just, I'm not normally hungry for breakfast, but I try not to have coffee on an empty stomach. That's why I normally do that. I also take my supplements a couple times a day. Most of these I take either at lunchtime or dinner time. Um, I take three magnesium pills a day, because I'm a little low on magnesium. I have this female enhancement organ blend. This has ovary, uterus, fallopian tube, liver, and bone marrow. So this is a really great organ blend for women, especially since we're kind of preparing again for getting pregnant. So I make sure I take a lot of high quality, nutrient dense organs to help prepare my body for another pregnancy. This is my multivitamin that I take. This is called Humax. This is one that has uh, methyl folate instead of folic acid. If you guys don't know about that whole thing, go check out my Instagram. I have a bunch of um, saved stories talking about why you should not be taking a folic acid but a methyl folate. And this supplement also has a shilajit blend, which is a, a mineral blend. And that's actually something that I don't see in very many multivitamins that I really like about this one. So I'm getting my minerals and all my vitamins. It's a chelated multi-nutrient blend, so if you guys are interested in checking any of these out, I'll link all these supplements down below. I take a thyroid complex for now because my I had my thyroid taken out not too long ago and I'm on the Armour Thyroid to help bring it back up, but it just needs a little extra support right now, so I'm taking this thyroid complex. And then, as usual, I take fermented cod liver oil and butter oil. And if you don't know about the benefits of cod liver oil, I highly recommend you go check out the Weston A. Price website. They have a ton of information about why this is a very important thing to be taking. And they don't even consider it a supplement, they actually consider it a food. So I'm just starting dinner in the crock pot so it can have plenty of time to cook. This is duck meat. Um, this is a drake that my husband butchered, I think, last weekend. But duck meat can be hard to get tender, so I like to cook it in the crock pot. So there's uh, two drumsticks, two breasts, you've got the organ meats, this is the liver, uh, here's the here's the heart, here's another liver, so we like, oh and then there's a little, somewhere in here is a little tiny kidney, I lost it though, oh here it is, kidney, um, so I like to cook the organ meats and the um, the muscle meat and whatever fat we can leave on, it just makes it more uh, well-rounded meal, more bioavailable. Your body can digest it better, but it has all the different parts. 
So this is going to be the base of our dinner. I'm going to add some sort of a seasoning to it. And I don't know what I'm going to make for a side yet. I'll probably decide that later. Maybe some sort of a vegetable that I have canned. And then with almost, um, I try to take this with every meal. Um, and I sometimes forget, I don't quite get it at every meal. But this is digestive bitters. This is triggering um, your gut basically to create digestive enzymes. So it just kind of helps in the process of breaking down food. And since my thyroid is too low right now, because we're kind of working on getting my dose regulated, um, I've been having a little bit of gut issues. It stems from low thyroid makes you have low stomach acid, so you can't quite digest food as well. So I take this in the middle of every meal, so it kind of is mixed in with my food, and so my stomach can properly digest it. So this is really helpful. I'll link this below as well. So for lunch, I just went and got some of our ground pork out of the freezer. We have locally grown um, organic pork from my friend that we got last year and pretty soon we will be restocking our freezers with pork that we grew this year. I did one pound of pork and then I had some leftover rice that I had fermented for 24 hours and then we had used it in a dinner a couple nights before so I just decided to throw that in with the meat. I try to use up as many leftovers as I can for lunch just adding in and I try to always add extra meat to them so Today was the adding in the pork to that rice. We generally do not eat very many grains unless I have soaked or fermented them. So we have rice maybe every other week. So this was one of those rare times we had rice, but I was absolutely sure to ferment it for 24 hours before I cooked it. And that removes a lot of that um, fictic acid and some of those parts of the grains that are more hard to digest and makes them more bioavailable and able to be properly digested. And then I added some sour cream and cheese in it and some seasonings and it was really delicious. For dinner, for the side along with the duck and all the organ meats that I was cooking in the crock pot, I chopped up some green bell peppers and some potatoes and zucchini all from our garden. So. This entire meal was grown by us. All the vegetables were from the garden and the duck was from our Muscovy flocks. So that was super cool. So I cut all that up and I fried it in lard that I rendered. We also had some of my homemade sauerkraut with this meal. I try to get in some of my home fermented foods in a lot of our meals for the beneficial bacteria and it just helps with digestion as well. And of course trying to remember to take my digestive bitters. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I eat in a day. Some of these were meals that me and the whole family had but the breakfast one was the, what I have every day for the most part. So I hope it gave you maybe a couple ideas and I wanna to try to do more of these videos soon so you can get more of a wide range of examples and not just from one day. And I have my what we eat in a week coming out really soon. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.